mastery. Let me say that again. As a leader, as a CEO of a company, as somebody that has influence in the lives of people, I cannot lead people forward into a tomorrow that I have not developed and grown to first embrace myself. I always tell people, you have to travel that terrain before you can take anybody else there. And what we have is a generation of people that are claiming to be experts, claiming to be masters, claiming to have all this wisdom, but they don't even know where they're going. And so how can you lead people into a tomorrow that is not yet born to time where you don't even know what you're doing. And so one of the things that keeps me sharp, fresh, always growing and developing is I realize that I have to stay ahead. And I tell people, some people say you want to stay ahead of the curve. I don't just want to stay ahead of the curve. I want to be on the cutting edge in everything that I do. And if I'm going to be on the cutting edge, i got to keep cultivating my capacity and growing, and I want you to understand that growth is not going to be convenient for you. If you expect everything to be easy, to be a cakewalk, to be just, you know, simplistic and no challenges, that's not realistic. But at the same time, you still have to remain committed to growth and development if you want to be successful. In a culture that emphasizes inspiration and motivation, I have always um, operated countercultural and emphasized intentional living and personal mastery. I want you to get this whole inspiration, motivation thing out of your head. I mean, it's good. I want you to be inspired. I want you to be motivated. But more than being inspired and motivated, I want your life to change. One of the most disheartening things for me to hear from a person is that I simply inspire them because inspiration doesn't necessarily lead to action or transformation. One of the most rewarding things I hear from people is that I have not only impacted their life but motivated them to transform their life. This lets me know that I've really gained influence with a person. You don't have influence because you inspire somebody. You have influence when you lead a person to action and transformation in their life. And so I don't just want you to be inspired. I want to see change happening in your life. And one of the things that I'm so grateful for is that over all of these years, I continue to hear stories continually of people's lives that are being transformed because they're not just hearing me give them some information or just reading a book. They are actually putting these principles into practice in their lives and it's producing. Ultimately, you don't need inspiration to change your life. You need to be fully invested in order to change your life. Let me say that again. You don't need inspiration to change your life. If I see one more inspirational quote, and, you know, this was one of the, the things that is interesting to me about social media. I mean, people will go like 500 quotes. And they won't do anything. I mean, that's great. You read some words from Walt Disney. Wonderful. But guess what? Walt Disney has fulfilled his purpose. He has fulfilled his vision. And he's gone on, and his vision is still living. And so I want you to go create something. I hang out on people's timelines and like stuff. I want you to get busy doing what you were put on this earth to do. And I want you to realize that you have to be fully invested in order to change your life. As we embark upon uh, this brand new series, I will warn you that I'm going to challenge your assumptions and demand your growth and development. I believe that it is impossible to create a better life as long as you remain a broken you. Write that down. It is impossible to create a better life as long as you remain a broken you. Now, I'm going to approach this as sensitive as I possibly can. Um, As a leader and as someone that influences people and consults and advises leaders in different capacities, uh, one thing that you will know, you know right off the bat, even not being behind the scenes, you know that we have a lot of gifted leaders. Uh, The problem is that we have a lot of gifted leaders, but they're not growing leaders. And a lot of leaders are not growing because they are trying to lead from a place of brokenness and not wholeness. 
And so one of the things that I challenge leaders to do when I get to spend time with them is to do the inner work and to heal those defects, inadequacies, and wounds uh, that you have been nursing and rehearsing for so long. You have to do it because when broken leaders don't get whole, they bleed on the people that they're leading. Write that down. When a broken leader does not get whole, they begin to bleed on the people that they're leading. And as I have looked into organizations and even people in very high positions, we have a lot of people that are bleeding on the people that they should be leading because they are not whole and they're trying to demand of others what they have not first demanded of themselves. And one of the first things I tell people is you got to heal your own life before you try to heal somebody else's. We have a lot of people in the world that are calling themselves experts and calling themselves authorities and masters in the space when they haven't even mastered their own life. I tell people the first thing that you need to master is yourself. And we have a lot of people that have not mastered themselves, but they want to tell us what to do with our lives. And so I'm one of those people to put up or shut up. I want to see the results. I want to see the outcome. If you are everything that you say you are, what are you producing? And if you're not producing anything, maybe we should tone down the messaging and the verbiage and let's build something that is authentic and built to last so that people uh, can really benefit from our lives to the level that they want to. I don't want to get too deep into that. But why is this happening? It is impossible to build on a faulty foundation and flourish. Write that down. It is impossible to build on a faulty foundation and flourish. And we have a lot of people in leadership trying to build on faulty foundations and expecting things to flourish for them. I always tell people that success is built from the ground up and success is built from you growing up. Write that down. Success is built from the ground up and success is built from you growing up. And we have a lot of I hate to say it, but a lot of immaturity in leadership. You got to grow up. Some some people are too selfish to lead. If you're going to serve people, you can't be selfish. It can't be all about you. It can't be all about what you want. You have to be able to put your needs, your wants and desires to the back burner and realize that there's a greater mission or a greater good. Uh, some things don't need to be repaired. Some things need to be rooted from your life. I can't say this enough. So a lot of times when we're trying to salvage things that we need to destroy, um, there are some things I know as I look back in retrospect now that I was trying to salvage, and it's like, Jamel, why were you trying to salvage that? It's gone. You can't repair it. You can't fix that. You can't make something that is broken operational when it doesn't want to be fixed or doesn't have the ability to be fixed. And I think a lot of times we waste a lot of energy on things in our lives that are irreparably broken. You can't fix that. And so instead of trying to repair it, root it from your life, get it out of your thought pattern and process and begin to work on building something new through your life. The first pillar to growth is the pillar of buy-in. I feel like this is so good. I don't know how far we're going to get because I, I, I'm already over in the introduction, but this is good. This is going to help somebody. Um, everyone craves growth, but very few people are willing to commit to growth. As I stated in the early moments of this show, everybody knows I, I'm a person of excellence. I demand it from myself. I demand it from others. You are not going to be part of my inner circle or my constellation of relationships and not be an excellent person. I don't do average. Um, I have no disrespect for average. I will never be condescending to what is average, but that does not work for me. And so because I live by very high personal standards and I demand excellence for myself, I demand it from others. And the only reason that I'm doing the things that I'm doing today and having the impact that I'm having today is because I made a decision a long time ago that I was going to commit to growth. And I saw a lot of people go before me. They took off really fast. It seemed like they were succeeding at high levels, only to look back and to see those same individuals fall 
and have horrible scandals and events attached to their names because they went really fast, but they were not developed for it. And I believe if you want to go fast as a leader, you better be fortified as a 